Hey there viewers, welcome to our channel. Today we're going to take a look at the Lenovo M720 Small Form Factor or SFF as it's abbreviated on their website. Um, before we get started, I do want to throw out that I am not a you know, computer savvy review type of person. So the purpose of this review is to see what's going on inside of it, see how the chassis opens up, see how to add more RAM, see how to add an extra hard drive and kind of get an overall feel for this computer. So uh, my point behind purchasing this computer, I've had it for about three days now, I have some extra RAM that we need to put in, so we're going inside the machine anyway, so I figured I'd take you guys along. But um, video editing, AutoCAD, Inventor, Fusion 360, and casual web surfing things like that. So anyway, um, kind of processor heavy applications, RAM heavy, things like that. Um, it has inside of it a Intel Core i5-8600. Uh, it looks like uh, this month, May, uh, it looked like they came out with some new processors. I ordered it with four gigs of RAM because it was a lot cheaper to go to like Kingston and buy the RAM and instead of having Lenovo put it in there for you. So, so to get started, we're gonna go ahead and turn the machine around the back and uh, let's look at the ports on it real quick. Bring you guys in. So I ordered everything pretty standard. You need to upgrade to a, a higher model line if you want the PS2 mouse and keyboard. We do get a serial. Um, unfortunately, I looked, there's no floppy connector, so I'm not exactly sure how to boot DOS without a, uh, without a floppy, just for some of my needs, old radios and things like that. We have a VGA, which I've never been able to test, uh, Intel Ultra HD graphics with two display ports built in. Um, I use a Logitech wireless keyboard, so there's four, looks like standard speed USB 2.0 ports in the back. Um, we have a LAN, so Cat5, you know, standard stuff there. I did order this PC with the NVIDIA GT 730, I believe it is. A two gigabyte graphics card to help out with my uh, software, you know, AutoCAD and things like that. And then it comes with a tiny little power supply in the bottom. So that's kind of the tour for the back. It does leave me with two additional slots, uh, you know, uh, small form factor slots. You got to get the mini cards for them. Uh, one is taken up by the Wi-Fi, but uh, the port on the board is not taken up by the Wi-Fi. So you'll see what I mean by that when we get moving on. So with some creativity, you could probably move that antenna. Two thumb screws and you're in. So one of the things that I noticed on this particular PC, like I said, I'm not a PC connoisseur, but um, no COA for Windows 10. Just has the little sticker saying, hey, I come with Windows 10. Um, I did reformat my own SSD. Uh, I put a Samsung Evo 860 in this machine and I had difficulty getting uh, Windows 10 to launch on a USB stick. So the BIOS is obviously the new version. I did a little research on that, uh, UEFI, and there is an option in the boot menu. You hit F1 because it'll say no media detected and you're going, what the crap? And what's going on here? Um, I'm sure there's folks in the comment box going to laugh at me for this one. but. Um, there is a compatibility mode and you need to uh, turn that on for, and it boots Windows 10, it boots BIOS just fine it seems. Uh, I could do the Samsung Secure Erase and all of that stuff. All with USB, Windows 10 activated absolutely beautifully. Digital license said it was genuine. You know, I did buy this machine with uh, Windows 10 Professional on it for the BitLocker and all of that other good stuff. Let's take a look in the case. Inside the case, like I said earlier, we have our power supply in the bottom. It looks like a hunt key. Never heard of them. Um, we have a unique cooler design. Um, I'm not a cooler expert, but uh, this, this is a unique design for this i5. I've not seen one like it. It exhausts all of the hot air out the back of the case. Um, you have very easy access to your PCIs. You have options for four. Uh, one spot is taken up for the NVIDIA graphics card, which does have a fan on it if you order it that way. And, like I said, your second and third option 
is not taken up by an actual card. Instead, the Wi-Fi antenna is sucking up a spot. So I'm sure if you got a little bit creative that uh, you could move that Wi-Fi antenna to a different location on the chassis, maybe drill a hole or something like that if you absolutely needed that extra spot, if you will. Rotating the PC around so the back is facing you, you can see that everything is very clearly labeled. The whole front folds up on this machine. So the first thing that we're gonna do to get into the goodies is we're gonna remove the front bezel. So you very carefully, hang on here, right as I break it on camera, we lift up and we put a little bit of tension on that front bezel and you'll see that it comes out kinda easy. Oh, there we go. Okay, the whole thing just pivots down. And you can see the front basil is held on by these. They're not clips, they're more of a, of a hook. So it's gonna pivot down and you'll be able to remove that without breaking it. Um, it does appear that if you order it with the card reader and the CD drive that you're probably gonna have a different uh, front basil than all of the other machines. I did order this machine with those goodies in it. So to get into the RAM and the extra fan connectors, I believe there are two extra fan connectors if you're a fan nut. So we're gonna push down here on this little red button and then on the front of the case, there's a little spring tab that was automatically actuated when you took the, the front basil off that locks this side in. So it's really easy to get into this case. You're gonna push down and then you see where it says number two, you're basically gonna Grab it with your pinchers and you're gonna pivot the entire front of the machine up. So just make sure you have nothing plugged into the USB ports and you shouldn't have anything to worry about. So what we're seeing in here, I did order this machine with the extra bay option. This is an option through Lenovo, not with the hard drive, but with the extra bay. It did come with a additional SATA connector um, it came with the power supply already, everything ready to go. All I had to do is remove this. This is the one spot in this chassis, um, believe it or not, that you are actually gonna need a screwdriver for. So everything is toolless. The installation of the drive into the bracket, no screws, don't worry about that. Everything fits super snug, super secure. Just to install the chassis into the, or excuse me, to install the drive, Bay, if you will, I'm sure there's a name for it, into the Lenovo chassis takes one number two Phillips. So moving right along with the tour, I do notice our power supply is definitely a proprietary design, unless uh, they've changed this motherboard connector. Uh, you're gonna be more than likely going through Lenovo to purchase one. Um, the wiring is routed really, really, really nice inside of this machine. I'm gonna try not to break my Wi-Fi antenna off. I might just, uh, might just remove that. Those of you who are antenna junkies are probably gonna notice the, I believe it's an SMA, reverse SMA connector on that. So some modding potential there. Um, again, looking at the motherboard, everything's pretty much color-coded for your RAM. We're gonna drop another RAM stick into this machine. Right here, you got your card reader. Um, Got your power button and some lights up here for some modding potential. Um, over in here is a couple cool things. One, you got a speaker, which actually works pretty good. Um, kind of a nice touch on a business machine. Uh, right here next to the speaker, where my index finger is pointing, is a great big, glorious, bright white LED. So if you want to mod the front panel on this, if that's your thing, you have a, either probably five volts or 12 volts or Maybe it's just two or whatever that white lead runs off of. So um, down here you have your M.2 and your wireless. So it looks like about the same form factor as what you put in a laptop. So that could be kind of neat. You have one antenna, which is gray. It's this gray wire. It's running up into the front of the chassis. Um, that's nice. It's taped. And your black wire is running to the rear of the chassis. You have your CMOS battery. They still call it that. I don't know. Um, and then you have, I forget the creator of the, um, I wanna call it BIOS, but um, I'll probably think of it here in a little bit. That's actually labeled on the chip. Up here you have three of your eSATA, excuse me, your SATA ports for your drive, your CD drive, which is a laptop CD drive. 
uh, your solid state, and then your spinner disc. So when I purchased this system, I just unplugged the standard spinner disc that it came with. I bought it with a one terabyte. I wanted to get the system running on uh, my own software before I erased Lenovo's in case I needed technical support or something like that. So here's the RAM stick that I ordered. I uh, went to Kingston's website, told them what computer I had. I've had great luck with their RAM and laptops and things like that. So we're gonna caveman this out with a steak knife. Must be the way the pros do it. Hmm, <laughs> whoops, no, I'm just kidding. We'll open this bad boy up. Pardon me for not putting my anti-static gloves on, but uh, I don't have a set. So do this step at your own risk, using your own materials, your own supplies. I am just absolutely not going to touch the edges, excuse me, I mean the uh, gold part of this board. So I'm going to handle the ram stick by the end. I'm doing this at my own risk. I'm not going to slide across carpet or anything. Let's go ahead and drop it in the computer. Okay. I'm going to put it in the blue one so we can color coordinate here. I'm going to open the little fingers. Move said wires out of the way. Very gently. Using my sausage fingers. I'm going to press the ram down into the motherboard. It should. Oh yeah, like old times, auto-close the little fingers for you. Just give them a click. Okay. And let's just take a look here. You can see I have 8 gigs of RAM usable. Well, let's see, 787 usable. Task manager. 2.2 used out of 7.9. So, looks like our RAM is all good. Installation was a success. So I'm going to leave the spinner drive unplugged for make sure everything posts and all of that good stuff. So I've changed one thing at a time in the system. Um, put a lot of RAM and a lot of computers and never really had a problem doing it with the uh, bare fingers trick. So I suppose some people probably say something about that. But uh, anyway, once everything powers on and I confirm that I have now eight gigs of RAM, I think this stick was like 30 bucks. It's uh, two triple six. That's what I call it. You'll probably call it something else uh, for the memory speed. I think that's all this board actually supports. So uh, you can check Lenovo's website for a little more information as far as that's concerned. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this uh, tour. Um, the only thing I didn't address was the standard three and a half millimeter audio jack on the back. Um, the front panel ports, I'll probably take a look at, um, I think you could probably see that. So you got four USB ports um, on the front. Kind of forgot to hit the front panel, I was, wanted to get in so bad. Anyway, um, you have two, I call them USB 10, but it's, it's actually USB 3, but uh, the 10 gigabit or what have you that folks are talking about. And then you have two USB super speed I believe they're four gigabit. Um, I did get this guy with the card reader. The USB-C port does not rapidly charge my phone. I have a Google Pixel 3 and uh, it's slow charge, but you do get data through it and all of that other good stuff. So I'm assuming that that's probably, you know, not a charging port or something. So it's probably just like the USB um, super speed SS ports that it doesn't probably do anything special. Just a different plug-in. You got a headset and a mic. I've never tried either of these. Um, kind of a wireless person as far as that's concerned. And then you have your standard laptop CD drive. CD drive, eh, kind of a thumbs down. It works. It's kind of obnoxious when you put a CD in it. The slides are plastic. There's a lot of play in it. Um, my uh, 2012 Dell notebook. Uh, it's a E-series Latitude notebook. The slides on it are metal and plastic. It's, it's got a lot better tolerance. This computer, I think they're really cheaped out on the, on the CD drive. I realize it's legacy technology, but you know, so is the serial part. Sometimes you need those. So anyway, um, without further ado, I appreciate you watching this inside case tour. I will plug the computer in. I'm sure everything will be fine. And 
then we'll uh, move on about our business. If you liked what we did here, be sure to leave us a comment and subscribe to our channel. And as always, thanks for watching.